Hello, friends, and welcome back to Stories About Entitled People. Let's dive into a story today about a decision that seemed minor at the time but ended up having major consequences. It's a tale from the corporate world where an attempt to save $50 a month on a cell phone expense culminating in six figures worth of operational damage. But before we dive in, make sure to hit that subscribe button, smash the like if you enjoy the content, and ring that notification bell so you never miss a juicy story. Let's save $50 a month and risk causing six figures in operational damage. First, I love working for this company. Honestly, I really do. It's a great company, great culture. This is just simply an example of bean counters looking to save $50 a month getting things so horribly wrong at times they cause six figures of lost productivity and damaged reputation with paying customers. Even after it happens, there's no change in policy. I joined a new company in January of this year before working for them as a consultant. During my onboarding, I had asked the hiring manager if I would be provided with the company's cell phone or be able to expense out my monthly cell phone bill. He looked into it and HR told him, this particular position is not eligible for a company's cell phone as it does not require after-hour support. This answer actually made sense. I don't need to get involved in day-to-day -day operations support in my role. They also literally never called me once during my whole tenure as a consultant after hours. So great, I don't want to work after hours. Up until last week, that policy was upheld, just like it had been during my time as a consultant. There was never a, we were trying to reach you yesterday when I logged in the next day or any emails asking for my help after hours. So I was loving it. I want to repeat, this is not a dig towards the company. They upheld their end of the bargain this whole time. But here is the MC part of this story. I have no cell phone number listed in my email signature nor on my internal company profile because hey, I don't have a company cell phone. I have a desk phone, but that's it. I talk with a lot of IT vendors in my role and I don't need them calling my personal line. I also didn't install Outlook on my personal phone or any company apps. So last week, a major update was applied to one of the platforms that fall under my purview. The actual maintenance is performed by an operations manager and their team. Things went smooth in our QA test environment. I signed off, my boss signed off, so everything was ready, set, and go. Major update goes in, someone incorrectly performed a few steps, even though that same person performed them just fine in QA. Things started going wrong, horribly wrong. I was nowhere to be found. I wasn't responding to emails, I had no phone number listed anywhere so they did the troubleshoot on their own. In hindsight, the fix was relatively simple, and I definitely would have been able to guide the team. The error wasn't even related to the update. They just went down a completely different path to resolve the issue, thinking the update was the root cause. It would have taken a few hours, but we would have fixed it. But in the moment, as things were going wrong and panic and trying to recover from the incorrectly performed steps, they somehow wiped the database. Somehow because do not ask me how, the backup was corrupted in this process as well and they couldn't use it to recover. Dear God. They had to go pull tape backups, which is excruciatingly slow to recover from and a week old. Monday morning, I log into my laptop and I notice the holy hell that's going on. Oh, crap. Get on a call with the operations manager. Operations manager is level-headed, no blame is thrown. Again, as I said, great company, great culture. Asks what happened to me, I told him I have no company phone. I asked for it and they said no. Just had to shake his head. Organizationally, he and I are at the same level. He just has a reporting structure and I do not. My boss and I got on a call for a debrief and he asked me the same question. I gave the same answer, no company phone. He's the one that told me my position was ineligible for a company phone as I was not required for after hour support. All told, it took the team five days to recover everything, rerun all the transactions that were lost from the source systems, another day and a half for the business teams to validate all was well and match up the numbers. My boss did ask me if I had a personal cell phone. I tell him no. I do, but it's the principle of the whole thing. As I said, I deal with a lot of external vendors now. I don't need them bothering me on my personal line. During business hours, we communicate over Teams, Zoom, WebEx, and my landline never gets used as I'm barely in the office. He didn't question me further. 
So all in all, about seven days of lost system access, productivity, operational reporting, inability to efficiently serve customers, inability to efficiently deploy frontline employees, etc., etc., etc. One of the business directors was still putting together the operational impact, but he figured it was easily six figures. All over $50 for a monthly cell phone bill for a bunch of corporate employees who thought they might need to call once in a blue moon. Funny part is a majority of IT is eligible for a cell phone because they're required for after-hour support. I estimate maybe 60 of us across all of IT aren't eligible due to our roles. Bean counters. Gotta love them. That being said, I did give my personal number to the operations manager for future emergencies. At the end of the day, I don't want my team and friends to needlessly suffer if I can help. All because some bean counter didn't want to spring for $50 a month for a cell phone. I mean, seriously. But hey, lesson learned. And our second story. You don't want to talk trash? Fine by me. So some backstory. I, 25-year-old female, spent my summer working at the garbage disposal unit in my city where I take calls about garbage pickups, new memberships, complaints, etc. A pretty chill and surprisingly fun job. Part of why I thought it was fun, and this is important for later, was that the garbage disposal in my city is not for profit, meaning that I didn't have to upsell the customers calling if they could meet their needs by using a smaller bin slash pay less. I could help them change to that. I was also free to call customers back if I found a better solution for them after the call had ended. I did this a few times and the customers were always happy that I called back and offered them a better deal. Win for them, win for me, since I made somebody's day. One day I get the following call. Me, welcome to garbage disposal unit, how can I help? Customer, clearly irate, hi, you didn't empty my bin yesterday. Now this is nothing too unusual. It was summer and the substitute driver sometimes missed a bin or two. Usually I just send them back, no harm done. So I ask the guy for the address and check out the pickup history, me. Oh, I see that we emptied your bin last week, so you weren't on the schedule to have it emptied yesterday. We'll come again next week. In my city, the options for garbage collection is either every second week or every fourth week. It was not unusual for people to mix up the weeks and call me, so I would just tell them they would laugh and say, silly me, and that was that. Not this guy. Customer, yeah, I know you picked it up last week, but you didn't pick it up this week. Me. Well, no, we only collect every second week, so we collected last week and we'll come by again next week. Customer, no, you collect every week, but you didn't collect it this week. Me, no, sir, we don't have collection every week. We have never collected garbage every week. Customer, I pay you to collect my garbage every week. What am I supposed to do with my garbage if you don't come collect it every week? I can't last two weeks. Mind you, he obviously had up until this moment because, once again, we have never collected garbage every week. Me. Well, you could try recycling or sort out your food waste or you could switch out for a bigger bin. Customer. I already recycle everything I can recycle. I have my own compost, so I don't even throw my food in the bin. I just have a lot of garbage and I need you to come pick it up because I pay you to do that every week. Me. Well, the customer interrupts me. You know what? I don't want to talk about this anymore. And without me saying another word, he hangs up. As I was processing his call, something he said clicked in my head. In the city where I live, you pay an extra amount for throwing food in the regular trash, which the customer was paying for. This guy had said that he had his own compost, which merited him a lower garbage fee of about 70 euros a year. Remember, I was free to call him back and tell him the happy news. Had he been any other customer, I would have. But he didn't want to talk about trash with me, so who am I to disobey him? 70 euros might not be a lot, but I get immense satisfaction thinking about this guy literally putting it in the trash, which is still getting picked up every second week, as it always has. At this point, he realized he effed up and just needed to save face. Crazily, this would easily be worth $70 a year to some personalities. And our next story. HOA attacked a vintage car. Hey Reddit, today I want to share a story about how my local Karen decided she was above the law and towed my 1959 Ferrari 250 GT to the dump because she thought my car was ruining her view. 
Spoiler alert, she ended up losing her house. Sounds like something out of How I Met Your Mother, right? Except instead of laughs, I nearly had a heart attack when I saw it. It all started one beautiful morning when I found the spot where I usually park my Ferrari, which, by the way, was passed down to me from my dad, who inherited it from my granddad. Empty. Instead of my Italian masterpiece, there was just a lonely breeze blowing. We live in a super safe neighborhood, so I usually park right in front of my garage. But I had a security camera, so I dropped everything and ran to check the footage. And oddly enough, I felt a huge relief when I saw Karen and a tow truck. I thought she just moved it to a parking lot or something. But no, it was our local Karen, the HOA president, who's made it clear she's not happy with me parking in front of my house before. Note that I'm not a member of the HOA, so to me their rules are more like, let's say, pointless noise from snobby old folks than actual laws. But Karen apparently decided she's the queen of parking and Judge Judy rolled into one. I called the cops and it turns out Karen was so sure she was right that she didn't even deny what she did. She admitted she hired some guy with a tow truck to haul my old Ferrari to the dump pretending to be its owner. My car wasn't in mint condition, but as you might know, any Ferrari 250 GT is worth at least $200,000. This model kind of looks like an old Mustang, but in good condition it could go for up to $700,000. And I once thought about restoring it to that state. Plus, the value of these cars never goes down if they're running. It only goes up unless they've turned into a pile of rust. The HOA bans parking cars older than seven years, Karen yelled as they arrest her. I'm not a member of your damn HOA. So, when it came to compensation, Karen had to sell her house to cover the damages. Imagine waking up one morning to find that one reckless act got you not only arrested for theft, but also homeless. Eventually, I restored my Ferrari, thanks to the local dump for not rushing to destroy such cars, and now, every time I drive past the house where Karen used to live, I can't help but smile. I hope the new owners appreciate my parking habits more than their predecessor did. And remember, folks, if your neighbor is a Karen, better get those security cameras ASAP. And our last story. I fought my landlord in small claims court and won. Per my lease and other documentation I've received from my landlord, the on-site parking lot is first come, first served, and no one owns a spot. If there's not a spot when you arrive, you need to park on the street. Last week, I had parked my car in the parking lot next to my apartment building. The next day, it was no longer there. After some phone calls to the tow company and the real estate company, I determined that it was towed because someone else in the building believed they owned the spot I was in. Per the real estate company, this is not true and has never been true as the lot is first come, first served for all tenants. My car was properly stickered and the company had my info slash license plate. I had to pay to get my car released from the tow company. The real estate company had mentioned reimbursement that first day, but so far I've not been repaid and they've been increasingly unresponsive. Update. After getting the runaround from my landlord about getting back the cash I had to drop on towing fees because someone else thought they had dibs on my parking spot, I decided enough was enough. My lease was clear as day. Parking was a free-for-all, first-come, first-served. Plus, I had all the receipts and texts where they hinted at paying me back. So I took my case to small claims court. I laid it all out there, easy and straightforward. My lease, the tow bill, and the messages from my landlord. The landlord's rep seemed caught off guard, fumbling over their words when it was their turn. The judge sided with me, saying I should get my towing company back and a little extra for the hassle. It was a win, not just for my wallet, but it felt like justice too. The landlord got a wake-up call about keeping their word, and I got to share the whole saga with my neighbors, hoping it might inspire them to stand up for themselves if they ever got in a bind. In the end, it wasn't just about the money. It was about making things right, and showing that sometimes you got to push back when folks aren't treating you fair. Plus, the landlord started to straighten up, making sure this parking mess wouldn't happen to someone else. Winning in court felt pretty sweet, not gonna lie. Hey guys, thank you all for watching the video. I'll see you in the next one.